If you're a beginner or intermediate drummer and you're wanting to learn jazz but you don't know where to start, this simple lesson is for you. We tend to fear jazz by believing that it's super difficult and only for advanced players, but you can and should learn basic jazz early on, as early on as possible, to increase your coordination and your musical abilities overall. Today I'm sharing with you a single rudiment that literally gives you all the tools you need to get started and have tons of fun in the process. You'll be playing the jazz swing ride pattern and even soloing all while using this one rudiment. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians that actually sound great and that others want to play with and have in their bands. And we do this by learning the core, non-glamorous, most important skills that get you the quickest results in the practice room. Hey, I'm really looking forward to today's lesson. We're covering the one rudiment you need to start playing jazz, which is gonna be super simple. And then how to use this rudiment to create your swing pattern and build hand-to-hand -hand coordination in the process, which is a very important step. And then lastly, we'll use this pattern to construct jazz fills and solos. Very cool, it's a really nice step-by-step -step progression we go through today, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. But first, there's a core kind of big pressing problem that you might be facing, especially if you're a beginner drummer, that we really need to get out of the way first and that you need to be working on alongside this lesson so we can take care of this big problem, get it out of the way. And that is the issue of a weak hand. If you have a weak hand where you've noticed that one hand just doesn't work as well as the other, probably the left hand that's the weak hand if you write with your right hand, you need to take care of that. The problem is there's a bunch of things out there telling you all sorts of different things you can do to solve your weak hand. And yes, it will eventually fix itself, but what you ultimately need, because you don't have time to practice everything, what you need is a step-by-step -step solution, which I have for you for free in the description below. It's my free mini course called Eliminate Your Weak Hand in Three Steps. These are three simple lessons that walk you through the core reasons why we have a weak hand, and in doing that, show you exactly how to solve it. So that's gonna help you out a bunch with today's lesson. If there's a weak hand, I'm fine with you pausing the video right now and going and checking out that mini course and then coming back to this lesson later. Know that if you solve the weak hand, everything we're covering today is gonna be easier. So just keep that in the back of your head. If you're running any trouble with weak hand, know that your solution is there in the description. I want you to grab that. All right, let's dive straight into this. The one rudiment you need to start playing jazz. And it's this, the paradiddle diddle. Now we're not just gonna use the paradiddle diddle in its original form. We're gonna do some weird stuff to it where it's still the same rudiment, but it's we're varying it, we're creating variations on it. So in case you're new to this, totally fine. The paradiddle diddle is right, left, right, right, left, left. So you could think of it as a single followed by a double with the right hand and then a double with the left hand. So right, left, right, right, left, left. Six notes, that's all. But for our purposes today, so that we can use this actual rudiment to create our ride pattern and to solo and do all this cool stuff, we're going to do a couple of things. We're gonna morph it a little bit and create these variations where it's still the same rudiment, still the same sticking, but because we're gonna start it in a different place, it's gonna to feel totally different and it's gonna work really well and be a lot more fun to play because right, left, right, right, left, left, it feels kind of rigid. You know, even if you get this up to tempo, It's not really that interesting, it's not that musical, but it can become very musical. So first variation we wanna create. This one, all we're gonna do is start the pattern halfway through. So if our sticking is right, left, right, right, left, left, we're gonna start on our fourth note, so halfway through. So we're actually gonna start with right, left, left, right, left, right. So it feels totally different. It's like learning a new pattern at this point. Even if you master the original pair of diddle diddle, it's like you're having to learn a new sticking here if you're just starting at a different place because you hear it differently, you feel it differently. And so that's basically evidence that learning sticking patterns, it's really not a technique thing, it's a mental hand-to-hand -hand coordination thing. So you gotta be patient with yourself here as you're learning new stickings and variations because you're really not learning a new sticking. It's the same thing, we're just starting it in a different place. So this is our first variation. Right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. And so on. We'll uh, go a little more in depth with exactly how to apply these and how to practice these. Right now we're just talking about what the stickings are. You can play along very slowly, just sticking these out, playing them with your wrists. So our next variation, this one, this is where we do something a little bit more interesting. So 
our paradiddle diddle is right, left, right, right, left, left. But let's invert this, like flip it upside down so that it becomes left hand lead. That gives us left, right, left, left, right, right. So it's the same thing, same rudiment, but we're just doing left hand lead instead. Left, right, left, left, right, right. But check this out, this is really cool. So we've got our left hand lead paradiddle diddle at this point. What if we start it though on the second note? That means we start on a right. So now it actually takes on a right hand lead feel because we're starting it on the second note. And this is a pattern we're gonna to use to create really cool fills and solo ideas on the drums for playing jazz. So this one, if we start it just a, a note off, we started a note later, it puts us on the right hand and it gives us right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right. And this pattern is really cool, really versatile. There's so much we can do with it as you will see here in a little bit. Now, I have to give you the disclaimer that the problem you might encounter as you're, as you're learning these, and especially as you start trying to play them faster, is that doubles are the prerequisite. You have to be able to play doubles well in order to play these well because there's so much doubles action in this pattern because we've got a lot of right, right, and left, left. So if you can't easily, smoothly play, you're going to run into trouble, but that's okay. I've got you covered because there are lots of great lessons here in depth on this channel about playing doubles well. And so be working on that. Let that be your additional study, your additional practice that's gonna help you out with this. Just like that weekend mini course. If you dive into the weekend mini course, that's gonna help so much with balancing out your hands. And if you're working on your doubles and just that rebound two for the price of one, the quick crash course I can give you right now is practice doing this, just letting the stick bounce twice for your doubles get used to that feeling of letting physics play the doubles. And then what you wanna do is also practice playing quickly with your wrists. And then as you go faster, start transitioning to fingers. That's the gist of it. I know that's the super oversimplified explanation of how doubles work, whether we're playing slow, fast, loud, or soft. But go dive into the doubles lessons I've linked in the description for more detail on this. Otherwise, we'll be here all day if I try to break it all down right now but that is the prerequisite that's gonna help a lot with this lesson. But you can go ahead and get started with this lesson today and learn these patterns, learn these stickings, and as you practice your doubles, you'll be able to get these faster and faster. Just remember, as you're working on your doubles and as you're practicing these patterns, so in review, our paradiddle diddle, then variation one, variation two, As you're working on these, always remember the end goal because when we practice things like this, they are a means to an end. The end being, we're gonna have a jazz ride pattern that's gonna feel great and we're gonna have soloing ideas. So this is all, musicality is the end goal. So just remember in your, in your head as you're practicing, that's what we're aiming towards. That's why we're doing this. It's so important to have a why when you're practicing something. If you can't come up with a why for what you're practicing, maybe you shouldn't be practicing it. But a lot of times these nitty gritty, non-glamorous, boring things that we need to practice, they do have a very important why. And in this case, the why is the musical application. That's generally what this comes down to. If what you're practicing is not gonna serve you musically, maybe you don't need to practice it. Maybe you should practice something else that will meet your musical goals. So if you're wanting to get some basic jazz down and start to really feel like, you know what, I can do this. This is a great place to start. That's your why. So let that be your encourager and your motivator as you practice these patterns. So variation one, you might have noticed how, as you're playing that, I want you to try doing this. So as you're, as you're playing along with me, you've got your pad out, you're sitting at your kit, play along with me and start to accent your right hand and ghost the left like this. What does that right hand part sound like? There's our jazz ride pattern right there in the right hand of this paradiddle diddle where we're starting it halfway through. It's so cool how this works out. It kind of feels like magic, like, oh, it just so happened to work out that way. But it shows you how applicable these, these particular rudiments are in actually playing music on the kit. So that first thing, practice playing the right hand louder than the left. Now the, the challenge here, the problem you run into with this is that you're having to learn dynamic independence and hand-to-hand -hand coordination. That's why I titled this section, use this rudiment to create your swing pattern and build hand-to-hand -hand coordination because you're essentially building that two-way coordination between right brain and left brain because you're having to learn, all right, 
I need to play the right hand louder, the left hand softer, and when you apply this to the ride and the snare, that's naturally the way it needs to be. But also when you apply it to the kit like this, you're hearing two very different sounds. And when your brain, when your ear is hearing ride and snare, it's like a totally different thing. Suddenly you're thinking about it more. You're noticing, oh, that's what my left hand, oh, that's what my right hand's playing. Oh, okay, this needs to be loud, this needs to be softer. So there's all these different layers of challenge that you're having to think about now versus when you were just playing it, hammering it out on your pad. And so that's the challenge here. So be patient with yourself if you're brand new to this. Know that you are building hand-to-hand -hand coordination and dynamic independence where you're able to play loud with one hand, soft with the other. Because to go the extra mile here, practice it like this. But also go the other way. and try going loud over here, soft over here. Now it feels much more like jazz when you're loud on the ride, soft on the snare. That's, that needs to be your default dynamic. Think louder on the cymbals, driving on the cymbals, softer on the drums when you're playing jazz, the opposite of rock. But to really well round your practice here and really solidify that coordination, practice going loud with the left hand, soft with the right. That might actually help your weekend a little bit too. Remember, the goal here is to develop a steady, consistent right hand ride pattern. Now, if you know anything about jazz, you know that you're not just by default gonna always be playing this pattern. You know, when we're playing swing time, we're not going. Most of the time you don't hear that kind of thing on the snare, filling in the spaces between the ride. But we wanna do this so that we can do this. That's the whole idea here. We want to build our, raise our technical ceiling so that we're capable of this kind of ghosting because that's gonna lead our ability to comp. That's the word for it, where we're improvising on the snare. like. If you want to eventually be able to do that, start with this simple thing we're doing today. Because that's going to get your hands working together and separately actually. In a way you're playing a linear pattern with your hands where they don't both play at the same time. And that's powerful. That's really going to help you here with building and solidifying that musical ability to play really nice feeling swing time because you're also learning how to listen specifically to your right hand in the midst of this two hand pattern. So that eventually, maybe you could take out the left hand and you've got this great ride pattern going on. By the way, as soon as you're able to, add in the left foot on two and four, but don't be in a hurry to do this, it's okay. Make sure you're getting that pattern down first, then add this in and keep it very slow. Remembering that in this case, the left foot will always lock in with the right hand. I'm trying to like point at it like that's helpful. It's probably not. <laughs> Just watch my left foot. Boom, 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 right, left. Dun, 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 dun. So it makes it fairly simple. Just keep in mind, okay, that's always going to lock together with that. Practice is very slowly. I can't give you a magic tempo. It's different for everybody, but keep it very slow like that, really paying attention to what you're doing. Something that I shared in a recent video, I think it was the one where we were talking about train beats. I told you, hey, the universal practice truth you have to follow, you have to abide by if you want to master something, is not only practicing it slowly, because that's great, that's true, you've got to practice slowly, but you've got to practice with dynamic precision when you're going slow. So in this case, we don't want to just go like this. Like that, we're just hammering away and we got a splash here and a chick there, all sorts of sloppiness. Even if that's in time, that's no good. That sounds terrible. So make sure that even when you're going really slow, you're playing with the dynamics that you intend to play with and you're getting the sounds that you want. So a nice firm hi-hat chick with your left foot, nice and, st nice and strong on the ride, soft on the snare. Because if you have the time and the dynamics in place when you're going slow, that means that it sounds really good and that means as you go faster, it's gonna sound amazing. So then you can just gradually scale in tempo and it's gonna be awesome. All right, lastly, use this pattern to construct fun jazz fills and solos. This is my favorite thing ever. 
Uh, I remember just at some point in my practicing, practicing rudiments, kind of stumbling upon this and being so excited, realizing, wow, I can use the right, left, left, right, right, left to create fast jazz fills that make me sound better than I am. And that was kind of a, kind of a fun cheat when I was in high school, realizing, oh, okay, I can play. You know, and play all sorts of stuff like that that sounds more impressive and makes me feel like a jazz drummer. But that's my goal here for you. Even if you're a beginner and you're figuring this out, as you can get it up to speed, and remember, as you're working on the weekend, working on the doubles, you can really start to feel like a jazz drummer and start to feel like you, you know that language as you're playing this. And that's what I definitely want to help move you toward today. So our pattern, our second variation, remember, is the right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, right. Now, in the same way we switched up the dynamics a little bit with our first variation a minute ago, we're going to do that with this one also, because really what we want to do is play the singles loudly. So right, left, left, right, right, left, right, but ghost the doubles. Now, the cool thing about this, this helps us out because it's easier to play quiet doubles quickly than loud doubles quickly, right? It's a lot easier to just go. Most beginners can very easily just go and play a pretty quick double stroke roll. It doesn't take long to get the handle on that. What's harder is to play. It's really loud, I don't want my in-ears in. But like go, 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 like play loud, strong, fast doubles. That's another story, because that requires some very intentional technique and strength. So we can kind of cheat here by making those doubles soft, but that's not our, our only reason for doing it. Yes, it does make it easier, but ultimately it makes it sound better. If you're just sitting here and blasting out, like everything's super loud, it just sounds like you're playing triplets. It would sound like you're going. And that's not interesting, but it does get interesting if it's. That's way more interesting because suddenly there's dynamics to it. And when you put accents within something, when you've got a bunch of notes and there are accents within those series of notes, there's melody. And when there's melody in what you play, there's way more musical potential because then you can start to put those things on the toms. And that's what's so cool here. I want you to be aware of the challenge that we're all gonna face here as we're working on this, and it's that this will get sloppy easily. So be aware of that. This wants to get sloppy, but remember, practice very slowly, focusing on the sticking. So right now, as you're first getting this together, I recommend you aim for a, you know, a fairly high stick height for those accents. I'm playing very lightly though. I'm not hitting the drum, I'm kind of just dropping the stick. So I'm playing lightly, but with some stick height, which is a great tip, by the way, for increasing your speed and fluidity, maintaining some stick motion without hitting hard into the drum, letting the sticks bounce off and float along. But for those softer notes, I'm letting my stick height stay probably down here. Yeah, probably about right here for the doubles, up here for the singles. So aim for that, but start very slow. And remember, dynamic precision with the time precision as you're practicing slowly if you want this to sound great as you go faster. Even if you're just wristing all of these out, because when you're going slowly, you can't use the rebound for the doubles. It just doesn't work. It would end up being... It would probably get sloppy. You could maybe make it work if you really try, but it's okay to just stick out each one of these wrist, 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 bump, bump. And as you gradually get faster, when we get to about right here, whatever tempo that is with your doubles, probably about 100. If you're playing soft doubles, 16th notes at about 100. That's where I can shift to just using rebound. If I'm going any slower than that, I can somewhat use rebound, but it's easier to then just switch over to using my wrist. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's clear. So that, we're kind of, we're, we're putting these two, two methods right next to each other. So when we're doing this triplet feeling, and I say triplet feeling because our paradiddle diddle pattern consists of six notes. So it has that gah, 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 kind of feel. But when you're practicing your doubles, really those should be in a 16th feel where you're going one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. So stepping into that doubles lane, we, we want to focus on that rebound versus wrist there in that 90 to 100 beats per minute. I hope that's clear. I hope I'm not making things more confusing. But as you're working on the paradiddle diddle, when you're about... 
about right there, that's where it makes sense to then just use the rebound for those soft doubles. Just let those be rebound. That way it scales so well, you can go faster and faster and you're not having to try harder to play those faster. All you're doing is gripping a little bit firmer so that instead of this, you get this. That's all there is. Too many students overthink fast doubles because when you're playing fast, quiet doubles, it's not technically difficult. It doesn't require strength. All you're doing is changing the amount of pressure on the stick. Do this with me, whether you're in front of your snare or your, your practice pad, and try doing a slow rebound double. So, okay, super slow. What do you have to do to make it faster? Put a little bit more pressure on the stick or press down just slightly until a lot of pressure equals, you know, a death stroke where we're just going into the drum, not really useful most of the time. So just play around with that. It's easier for you to sit there and figure it out than it is for me to over explain it. So just do it yourself, try this at home, and you'll figure out, oh, okay, this isn't actually that hard. And then as you build that muscle memory and build those habits so that it becomes autopilot, you're not having to try harder to go faster with this because as you build the hand-to-hand -hand coordination of playing the pattern, once you know the sticking by heart, and when you've practiced your doubles and you can play the, the soft doubles, that really is the big thing here. And the big, I put it in my, my uh, outline here as a bonus, practice quiet doubles. When you practice your doubles quietly and you practice going right around 16th at 100, switch over to just rebound. If you've got that going on, so if you could do that, or again, it's just rebound, not complicated, soft doubles, and then you can do those stickings, then those two things work together to give you that, those dynamics that we need and the ability to go faster and faster with this. And so remember, be practicing that. Go through the doubles trainings that I'm linking in the description as well as the weekend mini course. All of that's gonna really help you out with this. But let me just play a few examples of what you might come up with when you're doing a pattern like this. It's pretty interesting, pretty cool because when you break this apart, so remember we're going right, left, left, right, right, left. We can take the first half of it and the second half of it. So the first half is right, left, left, right, left, left. We could do a bunch of that. Then suddenly we could like make it feel like it's got some swing and syncopation by just playing the second half, which is right, right, left, where we're accenting the left. So if we mix those together, So I'm gonna play you some examples where some of these will be just straight up, right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left, up. Other times I'm gonna mix it up a little bit, but everything I play here is made of the building blocks, right, left, left, and right, right, left, where we accent the singles, goes the doubles. So that is literally just to give you some fun ideas of what you can create because when you're at these up-tempo swing tempos like 160, 70, 80, especially when you're up to like 180 to like 220 or so, that's really the sweet spot, around 200 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, where this works so well. And because we're not just playing singles, like if we were just playing like this, it wouldn't sound quite as cool and it would be harder to play those accents well, but because we've got this sticking, it enables us to keep all this ghost thing going on on the snare and reach over and play melodies on the toms. And that's what's very powerful about this. And this gives you such a fun way to apply this to the kit, such a fun way to use this. You know, a big question that I get from students and that I also see all over YouTube is how do we apply rudiments to the kit? How can I apply rudiments and the stickings I practice to the drum set? Honestly, this is the best. This is the best way to do it, I think. There are other rudiments that do apply pretty well, but in terms of like a hand-to-hand -hand sticking without really using the feet, you know, like we could play a groove with paradiddles, like. So there's your rock groove that's a great way to apply a paradiddle to a kit. But when we're talking about just right, left, like hands, 
a, a rudiment pattern, this is the best way to apply a rudiment pattern to the kit in the most musical and practical, especially in the swing setting. And that's why we're really focusing in on jazz for this. So remember, in review, practice these stickings slowly. Make sure you master the stickings and practice the dynamic independence of that first variation where you've got your right hand on the ride, left hand on the snare, loud ghosting. And then with the second variation we were just doing, practice ghosting the doubles. And so practice playing very soft doubles as 16th notes, as a separate thing. Or when you get to about 100, allow those to just become rebound, keeping your stick height really low. That's gonna help out a bunch with this, where then you accent the singles, ghost the doubles, but practice a bunch slowly, gradually scaling up in tempo. Check out the additional trainings below on doubles to really help you out with that, because eventually you can also start using your fingers, which is pretty cool. We talk about that in those additional lessons. And of course, dive into the three steps to eliminating your weak hand mini course, because if there's any issue whatsoever going on with either hand, it's gonna be very difficult to play this smoothly. You've gotta solve the weak hand if you wanna play anything smoothly involving both hands around the kit. But you can do it, you're fully capable of doing it. Like I told you, when you've got a step-by-step -step method for solving that weak hand, at that point you are empowered to do it. So know that you're capable of solving your weak hand. Maybe you just haven't practiced the right things up to this point. But go dive into the three lesson, mini course, three steps to eliminating your weak hand. I think it's gonna really be a game changer for you. And as we wrap up, let's get some discussion going in the comments. What are you going to practice right now to work on this? Or if you were playing along with me through this lesson, which is awesome, I love hearing hearing that so many of you guys and gals are playing along with me, which totally makes sense because these are these are drum lessons. You know, if you were sitting in the room with me, this is how how it might go. And so if you're if you've got your pad there, you're sitting at your kit and you've been playing along, what are some weak spots you've noticed? Like be like, okay, man, I need to practice my doubles. Maybe it's that simple, just work on your doubles. Or maybe the weak hand is the issue. Maybe you, need to, you just need to work on these stickings. Maybe you're ready to really master this paradiddle diddle thing. You've just got to spend some time on the sticking. So let's talk about that. What are you going to practice right now? What's your course of action for getting to where you can blaze through this and use this in a really cool swing context? All right, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I hope you've gotten a lot of value out of it. I hope this is really helping to encourage and empower you toward playing swing. Even if you're a beginner, you can play jazz. Yes, there are some basics you gotta get down. Yes, there's foundational technique, but when you can get that going and start moving past the super basics, you'd be amazed at what you're capable of playing. You can master swing, and this is a great way to get started, and it's gonna help push your coordination so much and your musical abilities. So, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. As always, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will see you on the next lesson. Know that you can do this. Stay non-glamorous.